Welcome back to the Ringside Review. This is your boy Bruce Lee. This is my second tape. My memory card got full. I didn't erase some of the past stuff I had on here. But this is tape number two of the Ringside Review. I just wanted to touch on a few things that happened this past weekend, which you already know by now. Uh, most of you do, which is uh, Hunt retains his Cruiserweight Championship in knockout fashion in the 10th round this past weekend. Also, we had Burns retain his uh, version of his championship against uh, Cook, which he knocked him out in the first round. We also had Juan Mel Manuel Marquez. He took a tune-up fight to get ready for Pacquiao, which is already spelled out in his contract with top rank, which he had to sign with because his promotional dispute with Golden Boy, but he had to go ahead and uh, sign with Ty Rank to get the fight with Pacquiao, so that's what he done. Uh, anyway, he took a tune-up fight against Ramos in the junior welterweight division. Uh, he knocked him out in the first round. Ramos went down with a straight right to the face. Uh, he laid there for about five minutes and I like he was knocked unconscious. Really, when somebody gets knocked unconscious, you know, their head hit the canvas. Uh, he had time to brace himself. Uh, anyway, he, he fell down and out, <clears throat> no heart, in my opinion, uh, to get back up and try it again. Uh, so he took the fall uh, against Juan Manuel Marquez, which Marquez uh, moves on to fight Pacquiao. Of course, Marquez risk injury and, and uh, defeat. Well, <laughs> I don't think he was going to get defeated, but he did risk injury, which would have damaged his uh, fight with Pacquiao. But he went ahead and took it to knock off some of the ring rugs. But anyway, he gets the KO victory. I wanted to uh, touch on uh, one of the big fights this weekend in the junior welterweight division. Zab Judah versus Amir Khan. This is a unification bout. <coughs> Zab Judah is the IBF uh, title holder. Amir Khan is the WBA super junior welterweight champion. Uh, they, they're both coming up. They're both 5-0 in the last five fights. With Zab Judah with three knockouts in those last five fights, Amir Khan with two with in his last five. Um, both uh, had some issues. They wanted to take other fights. Zab Judah wanted to go ahead and fight Juan Manuel Marquez, but Marquez wanted to do the fight in Mexico, uh, which Judah was not having. Judah said it had to be on the East Coast or else for that fight, so that that fell through. Amir Khan, of course, we all know his deal with Timothy Bradley. Uh, Amir Khan wanted to do that fight, uh, which he gave Bradley. He offered Bradley more, over half of his pay, UK pay-per-view buys. So that tells me he really wanted to go ahead and do this. But uh, we all know that how that situation turned out. That fight fell through. So I left those two looking for other opponents. Uh, Amir Khan was looking for someone in, in you know his division, and Zab Judah. After the, the Marquez fight fell through, he, they got to talking back and forth, Judah and, and uh, Amir. So they finally got a deal done, which this fight stay play, takes place on this Saturday, July 23rd. Uh, we have Zab Judah 41-6, Amir Khan 25-1. and one. Uh, Amir Khan does have the, the height and reach advantage in this fight. Uh, he is the favorite, in my opinion, to win this bout. But I'm going the opposite way. I'm going with Zab Judah. Uh, I'm not going by Judah's past performances, uh, which his last loss was back in 2008. So was Amir Khan's back in 2008. But I'm not going by his past <coughs> fights uh, those years ago when he, he did show a lack of heart, when he uh, just wasn't into it. But now uh, he, he has made a comeback, and he, he has shown me. He may not show the world yet. He might show you Saturday. But he has proved to me that he is ready and, and that his heart is not an issue. Or I should say his lack of heart is not an issue anymore. So I think this will be a good fight. Um, I see Amir Khan trying to keep Zab off of him with his jab with the longer reach and, and height advantage. Uh, but I see Zab getting in, inside on Amir Khan and fighting him on the inside. He won't, I don't think he'll stay there the whole fight, you know, because Amir Khan will, will keep him at bay. Um, I say half and half. This should be a pretty good fight. Uh, I'm, I am going with Zab Judah by split this, either split decision or a knockout in the 11th or 12th round. Uh, Judah uh, will win this fight and uh, obtain the WBA Super Junior Welterweight Championship and, of course, keep his IBF title. 
But I, I do see him winning this fight. I'm not saying this is going to be a pushover, but I do have him winning uh, either by split decision or a knockout in the 11th or 12th round. Uh, a few notes before I get out of here. Anthony Durrell is back in action uh, in the super middleweight division. He fights on this Friday. Uh, this is his first fight back from, uh, from taking a cheap shot in the Super 6 uh, Championship. Well, Super 6 Tournament. I'm sorry about that. Super 6 Tournament. This is his first fight back. Uh, he took a cheap, cheap shot and almost had neuro neuro neurological problems. Oh, my goodness. You know what I'm trying to say. Neurology. Neuro blah, blah, blah. I can't even say the word. Believe me, I'm not going to do this again just for one word. I am not going back to the beginning. <laughs> neurological problems. Neuro <laughs> neurological problems. There we go. Neurological problems. <laughs> he uh, he thought he, you know, he suffered a little bit uh, from that cheap shot he took in the Super 6 tournament. Uh, but he is back on this Friday. Uh, first time back. So I'm, I'm glad to see him back and, and healthy. First and foremost, I'm glad to see him healthy. On another note, we have Antonio Tarver, now known as the Tragic Man, not the Magic Man, he is the Tragic Man by now. He fights Danny Green in Australia coming up on this Wednesday. Uh, Mr. Tarver, uh, stick with commentary and, and analyzing uh, fights. That's, at this point in your, you know, in your life, that's what you're good at right about now. Just go ahead and hang up the boots and the gloves. I don't want to see you like Roy Jones or Evander Holyfield or or James Tony uh, or any other ones that's way past their time. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead, Mr. Tarver. Just hang it up and go ahead and stick the commentary on Showtime there. Uh, that will be best for you. Uh, also, before I get out of here, I wanted to go ahead and answer the few questions uh, that were submitted to me. Uh, first one was by Psycho Boxing Fan. Uh, I just, my thoughts on Kendall Holt, uh, what he should do next. Uh, you, well, you asked me, do, do, do I think he should take the fight with Matthias? Yeah, I think he should take the fight with Matthias. That would be a good step for him. Uh, either that or just tr jump straight to Bradley. I mean, he, he, I think he can beat Bradley. I think that fight with Matthias would be a heck of a fight. That would be one heck of a fight. But yeah, either Matthias or Bradley, that's the way Kendall should go uh, uh, in his next bout, I should say. I know he's not going to get a shot at Bradley. So yeah, Matthias <clears throat> would be the way to go for Kendall. And that would be a heck of a fight right there between those two in the junior welterweight division. And I had uh, another question from Brother JR76. You know, thoughts on, on, on Rios, who he should fight next. Uh, how would he fare, I should say, between the fight uh, between him and Robert Guerrero or, or Jorge Linares? Uh, to be honest, I would say Rios should go the, fight, uh, go the way of Robert Guerrero. The only reason why I'm saying that is due to timing. Uh, he he might have a chance. That would be a good fight. He he might have a chance to pull that one out just because of Guerrero's situation. You know his his long layoff, but it wasn't his choice. I, I commend the guy Robert Guerrero. That is, he he uh, he was taking care of his wife. They had they had cancer. Uh, you know his wife was pretty sick, so he he took some time off to to uh, take care of her. Uh, big ups to Robert Guerrero for that. But that's the only fight I see Rios. Uh, not the only fight I should say between those two fighters I think uh, he would have a good good chance of beating Robert Guerrero uh, if he were to fight him uh, Jorge not at this point I think Jorge would uh, win that fight against Rios um, either by a late round knockout or, or a unanimous decision uh, so uh, Rios' best chance in my opinion would to, to go with Robert Guerrero uh, that's all I have for you today and uh, be kind, you know, send some more questions for me. I'd I love to answer, answer them uh, next week on my next video. Uh, just keep sending them to me. And I, I would like to thank uh, Psycho Boxer Fan and Brother JR76 for those, uh, for those questions submitted. And I will talk to you guys later, guys and gals, <laughs> guys and girls, later. And I hope you have a good one. Peace out.